Nellie Bly was born Elizabeth Jane Cochran on May 5th, 1864 in Cochran's Mill, Pennsylvania. Michael Cochran, her father, was an Armstrong County Associate Justice and the owner of a successful mill. When Bly was six years old, her father passed away suddenly and interstate. Bly's family abandoned Cochran's Mill due to their inability to care for the property or their home. Bly began attending the state normal school in Indiana, Pennsylvania at the age of 15. There, she changed her last name to Elizabeth Jane Cochrane by adding an E. She dropped out of school after one term due to the family's financial difficulties. And soon after, she and her mother relocated to Pittsburgh, where her two older brothers had made their home. Bly sought employment to support her family, but she had less luck finding it than her less educated brothers. In the 80s, extreme gender injustice prevailed and women were pushed back in their careers. Elizabeth raised her voice in this regard by calling out for more opportunities for women in the workforce by writing a letter to the editor of a known newspaper of the state, Dispatch. The editor applauded her work and invited her to work with them as a reporter. This was the birth of Nellie Bly as she started writing articles by the pen name from this day. Her articles advocated for women rights enthusiastically. She was the pioneer of investigative journalism. If you want to know more about the insane life of Nellie Bly, watch this video till the end. Don't forget to subscribe before you move on with the video. The Race Around the World in the late 1800s, journalist Nellie Bly became a trailblazer in the field of journalism, breaking barriers for both men and women in the industry. One of her most notable achievements was her 72-day journey around the world, which she accomplished by train, steamship, rickshaw, horse and donkey. Bly's motivation for the trip was to beat the fictional journey of Phileas Fogg in Jules Verne's novel Around the World in 80 Days. Despite initial resistance from her editor, who claimed that a woman could not complete such a journey, he told her that her gender would make the trip impossible. No one but a man can do this, he told her. Very well, she replied. Start the man, and I'll start the same day for some other newspaper and beat him. He eventually conceded. Bly persisted in her aim and set a world record, beating her own goal and outpacing her competitor, Elizabeth Bisland of Cosmopolitan magazine. She started her journey on the steamship Augusta Victoria, which sailed from Hoboken, New Jersey, to London, England. She overcame her motion sickness and arrived in London in seven days. Then, a train carried her to Paris, but not before she made a little detour to Amiens to meet Jules Verne. If you achieve it in 79 days, I shall cheer with both hands, he said, wishing her luck. Bly used a wire to send brief dispatches to a newspaper while travelling, according to Roma Panganiban for Mental Floss. The world would stretch out the tail to keep the public's attention, because longer, more forest stories travelled by ship and slowly. Her editors started placing bets on the exact minute Bly would return home. They also reprinted accounts of Bly's journey from papers in the countries she visited. On Christmas Day, Bly arrived in Hong Kong, and went to the Oriental and Occidental Steamship Company headquarters to arrange her departure for Japan. She was informed by the office worker there that she would lose her race. Bly writes, Lose it? I don't understand. What do you mean? I demanded, beginning to think he was mad. Aren't you having a race around the world? He asked, as if he thought I was not Nellie Bly. Yes, quite right. I am running a race with time, I replied. Time? I don't think that's her name. Her! Her, I repeated, thinking, poor fellow, he is quite unbalanced, and wondering if I dared wink at the doctor to suggest to him the advisability of making good our escape. Yes, the other woman, she is going to win. She left here three days ago. Bly was not surprised to learn that Bisland was also travelling, but she continued on towards Japan, but not without a small detour to buy a monkey, while she waited for the steamship to be ready. She arrived in America after a lengthy voyage over the Pacific to San Francisco, where she was welcomed with joy. The world hired a single car train to take her quickly across the nation, a journey she described as one endless maze of joyful greetings, joyful wishes, congratulatory telegrams, fruit, flowers, boisterous cheers, wild hurrahs, 
swift handshakes and a gorgeous car full of fragrant flowers attached to a swift engine that was tearing like mad through flower dotted valley and over snow tipped mountain on and on. It was wonderful, a journey fit for a queen. In contrast, Bislin's difficult journey back to America from England cost her the race because she finished four days later than Bly. Breaking barriers. Nellie Bly was especially remarkable because she lived during a time when gender roles were strictly defined and women were not afforded the same opportunities as men. Women were expected to uphold a housewife standard. They were expected to do the cooking, cleaning and taking care of the children. Their role was very different from men in the 19th century. Women were not allowed to be outspoken and they were not given the same opportunities as men. Women were expected to support a certain standard society painted for them to have. Despite the limitations imposed on her by society, she refused to let those restrictions define her. Instead, she pushed the boundaries and challenged the status quo, proving that women were capable of achieving greatness in their own right. Despite facing skepticism and doubts from her peers, she persevered, determined to prove that women could achieve anything they set their minds to. Nellie Bly's accomplishments did not end there. She went on to expose corruption and mistreatment in mental institutions, advocating for better treatment of those with mental illnesses. Her reporting led to changes in the way these institutions were run, improving the lives of countless individuals. Throughout her life, Nellie Bly continued to challenge gender norms and push for greater equality between men and women. Her bravery and tenacity inspired countless others to follow in her footsteps, breaking down barriers and paving the way for future generations. Nellie wrote about immigrants, women's prisons, labour issues, abandoned children, sexual harassment and more. Was she ahead of her time? Possibly. But there were already many young women who wanted to dive into investigative reporting. She was brave enough to light the way. In conclusion, Nellie Bly was a trailblazer who refused to let societal expectations define her. She proved that women were just as capable as men, if not more so, and her legacy continues to inspire generations of women to push past limitations and achieve greatness. That's all for today. Hope you find it interesting and inspiring. Make sure to like, share and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.